Amen. Okay. So we have come to what chapter in the book, Great Controversy, Hillary? We are at the chapter, The Final Warning, chapter 38. And when you consider this chapter entitled, uh, The Final Warning, we have to ask ourselves, as I did in prayer and in study, is this confirmed in Scripture? Where do I find this final warning in Scripture? Well, we find it in the final book of the Bible, which is Revelation chapter 18. We find the final warning, and that is connected also with uh, Revelation 14 as well. So let's turn there. Chapter 18 of the Revelation. Let's begin our study. Kindly get your writing instruments, please. Get your notepads, Bibles, great controversy. Look with me at verse number one. The Bible tells us in verse number one, and after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Verse 2, Hillary. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And look at verse number 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plague. So here we find in the Bible the final warning. Now, understand this. Chapter 18 of Revelation does show us this warning. And to confirm this, not only is this found in verse 1 through verse 4 of chapter 18, but look with me at verse number 23. In verse number 23, you find a verse that confirms that chapter 18 of the Revelation does comprise earth's final warning. For in verse number 23, the Bible tells us that the voice of the bridegroom, and who is the bridegroom, Hillary? That's Christ. Will no longer be heard. Hillary, verse 23, what it says there? And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more mm. at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So if you are giving a Bible study, this is how you confirm that chapter 18 of the Revelation does have earth's final warning. When the voice of Jesus, the bridegroom, calling individuals to salvation will no longer be heard. We coin that as the close of human probation. Salvation ends. Is that clear, my friends? Amen. This is how we confirm that chapter 18 does comprise earth's final warning. Now go with me. Chapter 14 of the Revelation. What do we find in verse 9 and verse 10, Hillary? Well, we find the warning against the worship of the beast, the reception of the uh, mark, and also the worship of the image of the beast. Correct. And again, it says, here's how we confirm that this chapter has earth's final warning. That's verse 9, verse 10. Look now, what happens in verse 14 through verse 16, or even down to verse 20, Hillary, what happens there? Well, those that do receive the mark of the beast are gathered together in bundles to be burned. So we find the close of probation. Exactly. So this is how we confirm that chapter 14 and chapter 18 does comprise earth's final warning. Now, let's go back. Chapter 18, we're giving a Bible study here. Chapter 18 of Revelation, verse 1 through verse 4. What message of the three angels is repeated primarily in these verses, what message? Uh, the second angel's message, which we find in Revelation 14, verse 8. So compare chapter 14, verse 8 of the Revelation with chapter 18, verse 2 and verse 3. Amen? Amen. Look at the screen right here. This is what we find in the chapter, chapter 38, the final warning. It says here from top, this scripture, Hillary, this page scripture. 603. Go ahead. This scripture points forward to a time when the announcement of the fall of Babylon, as made by the second angel of Revelation 14, verse 8, 
is to be repeated mm -hmm. with the additional mention of the corruptions which have been entering the various organizations that constitute Babylon since that message was first given in the summer of 1844. Pause right there. So now, who, how many, which entities make up and comprise Babylon? Well, firstly, it would be the papacy, the Roman Catholic Church, and also the apostate Protestant churches as well. Let's go. Chapter 17. And this can be confirmed by an in-depth study of chapter 17 of the Revelation, verse 1 through verse number 6. Mm -hmm. And if you notice on the screen right here, we have Great Controversy, page 382. The bolded section brings to view that Babylon, in the primary sense, is none other than the papacy. All right? And then we come to page 382, paragraph 3, which says also that Babylon in the last days is not only the papacy, but also apostate Protestants. And that's what we find in the last sentence on your screen. Red words, Hillary, what it says there? Without doubt, in the various churches professing the Protestant faith. All right, go with me. Chapter 18 of the Revelation. Now, what is the condition of Babylon when the final warning is due to the world? Based on verse 2. Mm -hmm. Well, she has become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Let's read that. All right. As you referenced that in verse number 2, right? Mm -hmm. Skip on down to verse number 4. Verse number 4 says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, You know, friends, pause. Well, I won't pause right there. Verse 4. And I heard I heard what, Hillary? Another voice from heaven saying, Amen. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive what? Not of her plagues. Now pause right there again. Why is there a call given to those in Babylon to come out? Based on verse number four, why is there a call given to come out from Babylon? Why? Well, the last phrase and that ye receive not of her plagues. Exactly. Well, the last two phrases, Correct. that ye be not partakers of her sins, and secondly, that ye receive not of her plagues. Okay, talk to me. So what is sin based on Scripture? 1 John 4, 8, what is sin? The trans 1, 1 John, John 3, 4. Yeah, verse, verse 4. 4, yes. Uh, the transgression of the law of All God. All right, so that means under earth's final warning, the Bible is telling us, that the commandments are still valid. Amen. Understand. Go back to verse 4. Just before, again, remember in verse 23, what happens in verse 23 of chapter 18 of Revelation? Talk to me. Probation closes. The voice of the bridegroom is no longer heard, right? right. And just before that happens in the last days, what is the call in verse 4 again, Hillary? Come, Come out. Come out of her, my people. Why? That ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And what is sin based on Scripture, 1 John 3, 4? The transgression of God's law. So God's law is still binding on individuals just before the close of probation. Amen. Does that make sense, my friends? Yes. How many angles from Scripture we can prove that God's Ten Commandments are still relevant, still binding on mankind, right? Correct. Then it says that you be not partakers of her sins and receive not of her plagues. plagues. What's in verse 5, Hillary? Verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. So why, again, thirdly, why is there a call to come out from Babylon based on verse 5? Her sins have reached unto heaven. What does that mean? She's filled up the measure, the cup of her iniquity. It's full. It's full, yes. Probation is closed, right? There's no more intercession. Jesus is about to close his work of intercession. In the heavenly sanctuary. Now, I want everyone to write this point down. Go back with me to verse 1. Now, when a few months back, a few years back, I was sharing this study. And by the way, this is a series of studies that we are going through on Sabbaths, which we began last Sabbath, right? Earth's final warning, the loud cry, the mighty cry, the strong voice. Amen? Amen. Verse number 1. I was sharing this and... Uh, a question was posed, was asked, Pastor, how do you know that this angel does not represent one literal being? Why do you say it's a group of individuals that will be giving Earth's 
final warning. Go to first one. After these things I saw, what, Hillary? Another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And here's the answer. Put beside verse 1. Verse 1, this angel, this mighty angel, this powerful angel, it represents a mighty movement. Put it down. It points to what, Hillary? A mighty movement. A powerful movement, a mighty movement, a strong movement. Verse 2, and he cried how? Mightily. Mightily. With a strong voice. This is a mighty movement. Now, underscore this, because I'm going somewhere else to compare Scripture with Scripture. And I saw another angel do what now? Come down from heaven. Underscore that. Those four words. Come down from heaven. And beside verse number one, also underscore lightened, lightened with his glory. The earth lightened with his glory. Beside verse one, put down, I won't tell you yet. I want to ask you a question. Where else in the Bible do you find an angel coming down from heaven to spark a mighty movement in earth's history? Any examples? I'm waiting on you. Talk to us. Go with me to Exodus chapter 3. Where are we going Ten. to? Exodus, Exodus three. chapter 3. And I was thinking about um, Revelation Ten. 10 as well. Exactly. Yes. Chapter 10 of Revelation, you see this angel coming down. Mighty. A mighty movement between 1840 through 1844. And of course, we can stretch the timeline to 1798 through 1844. Mm -hmm. By the way, go, go there with me now. Exodus chapter 3. Hillary verse 2, what it says in verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire mm. out of the midst of a bush. And he wow. looked and beheld, I'm sorry, and he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. Let me make sure everyone is with me. Mm -hmm. Would you agree that the movement that when God called Moses to go down into Egypt and to call his people out, that that was a mighty movement? Do you believe that? Amen. And who precipitated who started that mighty movement what came down in verse 2 ah and thank you so much an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in what in a flame, flame of, what? of fire would you agree fire brings light amen would you agree with that yes look with me skip on down to verse number 8 Hillary and I am come down to deliver hold them. on now so who is talking the angel of the Lord. Lord. And what does he say in verse 8? I am come down. Do you see it now? Yes. So did an angel come down in Exodus chapter 3 to begin the Exodus movement? Right. The call out. All right. Do you remember in chapter 18 of the Revelation, verse 4, what is the call in verse 4, Hillary? Come out of her, my people. Mm. Let's read that now. Chapter 3 of Exodus. Go now, Hillary, to ver no, go back to verse 8. Again, Hillary, verse 8. And I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up uh, out of uh, that land. To bring them up out of that? Out of that so land. So where was God calling them from? Out of Egypt. The house of? Of bondage. And bondage to what? Sin. Sin. All right. That's Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. Bondage to sin. Read on. Okay. Unto? To bring them up out of that land onto a? Land flowing with milk and honey. Skip on down to verse number 10 now, Hillary. What it says now? Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Bring forth who now? No. My people. My people. Amen. Come on. Who, friends? My people. And what says chapter 18 and verse 4 of the Revelation? Talk to me. Come out of Come her. Out of her my, people. my people. Amen. So do you see it, friends? Yes. So this is a mighty Movement. If that's clear, my friend, say amen. It's clear. And the parallel goes deeper because this is just before the call out happens um, while the plagues are falling as well. About to fall. About to fall. Thank you. About to fall. Right. Amen. Powerful, right? About to fall. The ten plagues. Amen. And the seven last fell on the Egyptians. Egyptians. Amen. Amen. Notice now. So why was there a calling out in the days of Moses? When this angel came down and sent Moses and sent Aaron to go down into Egypt, down into the house of bondage, bondage, bondage to 
sin, sin and idolatry and apostasy, abomination, Edenism. come out of her, my people. What was about to fall on the Egyptians? The, the plagues. The plagues. Look now. Mm -hmm. And why did God call them out of Egypt? One reason. Why? To restore true worship. Ah. To restore what, my friend? True worship. True. Let's read that. Go to verse 12. Oh. Hillary has gone, gone <laughs> from us. Verse 12. <laughs> and he said, certainly I will be with thee, Moses. And this shall be a token unto thee, Moses, that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. You shall what now? Serve God. You shall what now? Serve, serve God. God. Now, underscore the word serve and put the word worship. S serve and put the word worship and put down Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 10. For Jesus says, it is written, pardon me, it is written, I don't want that verse, uh, it is written, uh, pardon me, pardon me, uh, pardon me, and go up to verse number, serve, uh, thank you, verse 10, okay. for it is written, thou shalt worship, worship the Lord thy God, God and him only shalt thou, thou serve. Amen. Come out of her, my people. In the context, the plagues are about to fall. Amen. Amen. And that you go and serve me or go and worship me. Thank you so much. Go back with me now. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense now, my friends? It does. That this angel in chapter 18, verse 1, that comes down, a mighty angel, lighten the earth. This is a mighty movement. All right. And on the theme of worship, it's interesting that in the beginning, this mighty movement in Exodus, that the sanctuary service was instituted to bring them back to true worship. Man. But of course, we know in Revelation 18, when the people are called to come out of Babylon into true worship, of course, we know that the heavenly, the ministry in the heavenly sanctuary is not going to open, but it's going to be closed. Mm. Intercession That's is true. going to cease. So that means when God calls his people out from Babylon, he's calling them into the sanctuary worship. Message. Amen. It's message. Amen? Yes. Chapter 18. Go back there with me. So, Hillary, talk to us. So, what is the primary issue under the proclamation of the final warning based on what we just covered in the book of Exodus? Well, it's dealing with worship of God versus the worship of man. God's commandments versus That's man's it. commandments. The mark of the beast versus the seal of God. So, put it down. Earth's last warning primarily addresses uh, the mark of the beast issue mm -hmm. and obedience to God's Ten Commandments. Put this text down. Chapter 13 of the Revelation. Put it down. Chapter 13, verse 15 through verse 17. Then chapter 14 of Revelation. Put down verse 9. Put down verse 10. And put down verse number 12. This is earth's final warning. If any man worship the beast and his image. image and receive his mark the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God and notice because Pharaoh and the other Egyptians refused to accept true worship from God through Moses what did they receive they received this set, the plagues and notice the plague let me hold on to that point let me hold it let me hold it Hillary talk to us let me hold it let me hold my horses amen Hillary talk to us when officially does a person receive the mark of the beast? And then I'll go back to my point. When officially does a person receive the mark of the beast? Well, at the passing of the National Sunday Law, when both sides of the issue have been clearly presented to Correct. such a person and they make a conscious decision to receive the mark of the beast, that's when they uh, get it. Let's read that. Great Controversy. Page 604 on the screen and page 605. All right. Just the first sentence, Hillary, on top, the first sentence. With the issue thus clearly brought before him, mm -hmm. whoever shall trample upon God's law to obey a human enactment receives the mark of the beast. Okay, thank you. And then the second uh, portion on the screen from GC 605 paragraph 2 says that when the law is enacted in the land, 
then those who still on a Sunday receive the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. And those who continue to obey God's Ten Commandments, including the seventh-day Sabbath, will then receive what? The seal of God. Now, the point I was going to make was, go to John 3, the point I was going to make was, when did God allow the ten plagues to fall upon the unrepentant Egyptians? Mm -hmm. Was it before? They received light from God through Moses or after? When? Before, after. after. Thank you so much. After. So not until the issues, as you said, Hillary, mm -hmm. are laid out before the people when the Sunday law is enforced, those who on a Sunday will then receive what? The mark of the And beast. then receive what from God? The wrath of God. Go, go to John chapter 3. Now, I'm going to show you something. Do you remember? Let's compare John 3 verse 19. With Revelation chapter 18 and verse 1. Watch carefully now. We, we shall prove when the Sunday law is enforced, that is when the mark of the beast is officially placed on individuals who honor God's, who re rejects God's seven day Sabbath and holds to Sunday. Right. Chapter 18, verse 1 says uh, that this angel comes down having great power, and the earth is what, Hillary? Lightened. With Light. His glory. Lightened. Amen. Mm -hmm. Light. Light. Look at John 3 now. John chapter 3. Hillary, do you have it there? Yes. Okay. I'll read verse 17 to set things up, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned. But the one who, who believes not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name, the character of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 19, Hillary. And this is the condemnation that, that light is come into the world mm. and men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. And what says of this angel in chapter 18 verse 1? And I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power. And the earth was lightened. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. Again, verse 19 for Emphasis, Hillary. Verse 19 again. And this is the condemnation, mm. that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, Why? because their deeds were evil. Read verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, Mercy. neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Pause right there. Put beside verse 20, Cain. Mm. Because did, did Abel shed light, the light of truth, oh, yes. the sanctuary light? True, did Abel shed the light of true worship? Amen. Yes. But what was in the heart of Cain, Hillary? Rebellion and hatred toward his brother. Why? Because his, he was condemned by, by Cain's righteous lifestyle. By Abel's. By Abel, yeah, by Abel's righteous lifestyle. And the light. He was condemned. And the, the light. light. Right, the because light. it exposed his that, error. That's his it, the sin. light. Mm -hmm. Amen, friends? Amen. So now, just as Cain slew Abel because Abel shone the light of true worship, Cain hated that light. Yes. Make sense now? Right. So what will happen when this angel comes down hmm. with great power and lightens the earth with God's glory? How would the modern-day Cain's respond? They'll try to quench the light. They will persecute those who, um, who hold to the light and are giving the light. Does it make sense? It makes perfect Verse 21. Sense. Verse 21, Hillary. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. And it's interesting that as we're reading about the light, we know that Christ is the light of the world. And that's what happened to Christ. They didn't like the light. He is the light. So they crucified him. As you brought the example of Cain, Cain um, Abel, Abel would typify Christ because they put out, they thought to put out the light by killing Christ, but that only made it sh shine even brighter. So now, who will God use to proclaim Earth's final warning? Talk to us. Well, He will use humble instrumentalities, consecrated persons, individuals of faith and prayer. Let's read that. GC, Great Controversy, page six oh six from top here. Thus the message of the third angel will be proclaimed. As the time comes for it to be given with greatest power, 
the Lord will work through humble instruments, mm. leading the minds of those who consecrate themselves to his service. Yes. The laborers will be qualified rather by the unction of his spirit mm. than by the training of literary institutions. Mm. Men Ma of faith and prayer will be what? Will be constrained to go forth with holy zeal, declaring the words which God gives them. The sins of Babylon will be laid open. Crucifix. So who will God use? Men of faith and, and before prayer. I go to the scriptures to confirm this, tell us, will this, will earth's final warning be as the 1840 to 1844 movement? It will exceed that. You mean it won't be as great or will it be as great as the reformation of the 16th century, Hillary? It will exceed that as well. That too? Yes. You mean the movement on the John Wycliffe, Martin Luther? John Huss? It's going to be even more powerful because this is the final generation. Mercy. So it has to be. We are told it's going to be similar as which movement then? The movement on the day of Pentecost. Look what this says. Hillary, look at page 611 of Great Controversy. Blue words. The Advent movement of 1840 through 1844 was a what movement? A glorious manifestation of the power of God. And we see that movement in what chapter in the book of Revelation? 10. Ch thank you so much. With another mighty angel. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Then it says on the screen, blue words again, in any land since which movement? The Reformation of the 16th century. Read the red words for us, Hillary. But these are to be exceeded by mm. the mighty movement under the last warning of the third angel. The work will be similar to that of the day of Pentecost. Praise God. Amen. What, what a movement. So now let's go back then to the time period of the day of Pentecost and see the individuals that Christ used. Go to Acts chapter 4 with me. Go there with us, my friends. Where are we going to? Acts chapter 4. So what's coming in the last days? And remember, did God not say, I'm going to send you the Spirit of God? You shall receive power. Oh, Yes. After you receive whom? The, the Spirit, Spirit of God. Spirit. This is another mighty movement. Yes. And what's coming in the last days will be similar. And I believe just as it was when the day of Pentecost. Go to Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Hillary, what it says? Verse 13. Now Acts 4, 13. Okay. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John mm. and perceived that they were unlearned, unlearned and, what? and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that, that they had been with Jesus. So who was God using? Those who were what? Unlearned and, what? and ignorant. In what context though? In the context huh. of the world. Worldly That's it. education. And even from these apostate in institutions. Rabbinical schools. Rabbinical schools, exactly. That's it. So just as we read back to the screen on page 606, the laborers, red words, will be? will be qualified rather by the unction of his spirit than by, than by the training of literary institutions. Okay, and were they with Jesus? Yes, they were. And it says the Lord will work through whom? Humble instruments, leading the minds of those who consecrate themselves to his, to his service. Go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Now, I won't read this. Mark these verses. Talk to me. When Judas fell by the wayside, hung himself, was lost, right? There were only 11 disciples left. But the 12th, the 12th number had to be made up. Right. What was the criteria to choose an individual to make up the number 12? Do you recall the criteria? All right. That's your homework. <laughs> Amen. The homework is in verse 20 through verse number 26. That's your homework, my friends. Now, Hillary, once earth's final warning goes forward, what effect is it going to have specifically on church men who are in apostasy? Talk to us. It's going to anger them and it's going to incite uh, their wrath, their ire and persecution. As Let's well. read that. GC 606. By these solemn warnings, the people will be stirred. Stop right there. They'll be what, my friends? Stirred. Stirred. Skip on down. Thus say, red words, thus say the Lord. The popular ministry, like the who? 
The Pharisees of old feel with what, friends? Anger. Anger. As the authority is questioned, will denounce the what, Hillary? The message as, as of, of Satan. And stir up the sin-loving multitudes. Do what now, Hillary? To revile and persecute those who proclaim it. So will they be angry with God's messengers? Will they, my friends, talk to me? Absolutely. Will they denounce God's messengers and the message as of Satan? Yes. Did that happen in the days of Christ? It did. How did they style Jesus as he was giving the warning message to the Jews just before he died and just before the close of probation for them? Well, they called him a lot of things. Beelzebub, they called him a wine bibber, they called him a... Um the prince of the devils. Yes. Go to Matthew 12 with us, my friends. So we are seeing here, we are confirming that what we see in the book, Great Controversy, those principles are laid out in scripture. Correct. That's why Ellen White herself said that if we had studied the Bible as we should, as we ought to, we would never have needed the testimonies. But the mere fact, God gave them to us. There's no retraction. Amen, we friends? We need them. We Amen. need them. Matthew chapter 12. Look at it carefully now. Verse number 21. Hillary, what it says in verse 21. It says, and in his name shall the... Matthew 12, 21. You're correct. You're correct. Okay. Go ahead. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Verse 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil. And did he heal him? Yes. Let's keep on down to verse number 23. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? Read verse 24 with weeping, Hillary. Verse 24. But when the Pharisees heard it, mm. they said, This fellow, fellow doth cast doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the, the prince, prince of, of the, the devils. devils. So what were they saying about Christ? Who were they saying possessed Christ? The, the devil. devil. Were they angry? Look at this statement now. It's coming again, my friends. GC 607, as the controversy extends into new fields and the minds of the people are called to God's downtrodden law, Satan is what, everybody? A stir. A stir. The power. The what? I like the that. Power. The what, my friends? The power. The power attending the message will only madden mm. those who oppose it. it. And remember now, chapter 18, verse 1 of the Revelation says that the angel comes down with great power. So that power will do what to those apostates? Madden. Madden. And when they are maddened by the message, as, as a result of rejecting the message, they become maddened. They become in a rage because they are drunk with the wine of Babylon. How will they label God's saints? Commandment keepers at that time. They'll call them drunk. How do we know that? Well, we know that from the account of the apostles on the day of Pentecost when Peter was preaching. They said that Peter was drunk with new wine. Go to Acts 2 with us. Go to Acts 2. And they called Christ a wine bibber that's and a it. drunkard. They that's called it. him that as well. Yet who was drinking the wine? They were drinking the spiritual wine and also the literal wine. And called Christ a wine bibber. And since the earth's final warning will be similar as on the day of Pentecost in that time period. Look what, look how they labeled God's saints. That same label will be placed on whom? God's saints in the last days. Commandment keepers. Verse 14. Pardon me, pardon me. Go to verse 12, Hillary. And they were all amazed. All right? But some were in what? Doubt. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. Saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mocking said, the disciples, these men are full of what? Of new wine. They are drunk. But what said Peter in verse 14? But Peter, standing up with the eleven, said lifted what? up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Pause right. And, and verse 16, but this is that which was... Spoken by the, by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last day. I will pour out my spirit. That's the angel coming down, my friends. Amen. Great power, and they shall prophesy. Mm. Does it make sense, my friends? What is coming will be similar to the experience in a time period of the day of Pentecost. Pentecost. And what will the church leaders do in an attempt to extinguish 
the power and light emanating from God's commandment keepers as they give earth her final warning. They'll appeal to the strong arm of the government. Mm, mm, mm. Look at this. GC 6 And how do we know that? Well, they did it in Christ's day when um, leading up to Pentecost, of course. They did it in Christ's day and they did it again with the apostles. <laughs> So to what silence the message. So what we're seeing that are coming in the future have been, and there's no new thing under, under the... the and Don't. even during the Advent movement, well, before the Advent movement, during the time of the Reformation, the same was done. During the Advent movement, the same was done. Thank you. GC 607, there it is, my friends. There it is. To ex Let's read the first line, Hillary. First line. The clergy will put forth almost superhuman efforts to shut away the light. Lest what? Lest it should shine upon their flock. Red words, the church. The church appeals to the strong arm of the civil power. And what happens? And in this work... Papists and Protestants unite. Read on. As the movement for Sunday enforcement becomes more bold and decided, the law will be invoked against commandment keepers. They will be threatened with fines and imprisonment, and some will be offered positions of influence and other rewards and advantages as inducements to what? To renounce their faith. Hey. Go to John chapter 11. Because what we're seeing that is coming, the things that are coming have been, John chapter 11, just mark these verses. I won't spend much time here, but these things happened to Christ in the first advent as it was then so in the second advent. John 11, just note verse 47 through verse number 51. What verses? 47, 47 through verse through 51. 51. Let me give you one more. Go to Luke 23. Luke Chapter 23, I'll read this one, it's short. Verse number 12, who and who, who, which two men united, which two groups united to crucify Christ, Church to extinguish that light? Church and state. Herod and, and Pilate. Read verse 12, Hillary. And Luke the 23. same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. And amen, and notice, look at verse number 20, uh, 21. What was heard in verse 21? Crucify him, crucify him. So what two groups came together that led to Christ's crucifixion? Church and state. That's it. Is it coming again? It is. Go to Acts chapter 5. I'll give you a third one. Go to Acts 5. Now this one is beautiful in Acts 5. Go ahead. Yes, I was just going to say it's interesting that Pilate was influenced by the people. He didn't necessarily want to have Christ crucified. That's it. But... He was influenced by the multitudes. Notice. Thus it will be. Yes. In, in the last days, right? Correct. Acts chapter 5. Look at verse 17. Then the high priest, churchmen, rose up and all that were with him, which is a sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with what, Hillary? Indignation. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Were they placed in prison? In the past, yes, the day of Pentecost in that time period, oh, yes. what will happen to God's people in the last days? In will some be placed in prison? Yes. That's it. So what we find in great controversy are those points in the Bible. Let's read on. Verse 19, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, what, Hillary, in verse 20? Go, stand and speak in the temple Ooh. to the people. All the words of this life. All the words of what, my friends? This life. Talk to me. Talk to me. Underscore life, L-I-F-E, and put the word light, L-I-G-H-T. Notice now, and put John 1, verse 4. John 1 and verse 4, Bible says, For in Jesus, in him, was life, L-I-F-E, and the life was the light of the world. So what were they to preach? Even though they were put in prison, go and speak the words of life. Life. And that life brought light. light. Amen. <laughs> Do you see it, my friends? Oh, yes. So now what will happen among family members now? Let's get sad now, friends. Yes, this is a sad point now. When earth's final warning goes forward, what will happen in the homes, in the families? Mm -hmm. Talk to us, Hillary. Well, those who reject the message are going to persecute um, and revile those family members that receive the message. 
that heed the message and come out of Babylon. And There's going to be sore strife and division and um, even persecution within families. I mean, can you imagine this coming to your family? It's going to be a sad day, my friends, but it's coming. Go to Matthew 10. It's coming. It's coming. Look at this. GC 608. Conscientious obedience to the word of God will be treated as rebellion. Hillary, blinded. Blinded by Satan, the parent will exercise harshness mm. and severity toward the believing child. Mercy. It's even happening today. Mm. The master or mistress will oppress the commandment-keeping servant. Affection will be alienated. Children will be disinherited and driven from the home. When Sister from White home. says, affection will be alienated, what text come to mind? Affection will be alienated. Affection, come on. <laughs> For the love of men shall wax cold. Matthew 24 and verse 12. Can you give me another scripture? Now, I'm going to give you a hint. Mm -hmm. Last days and affection. 2 Timothy, go there, quickly. Hold Matthew 10, go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, chapter 3. Hillary, this know also that in the last days, what days, my friends? Last days. Last days, perilous, dangerous, time shall come. Now, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Pick it up now, Hillary. Verse 3. Without, Without natural affection. There it is. Mm -hmm. Affection on the screen. Affection will be alienated. Children will be disinherited and driven from their homes. Mm. Pause right there. And what is in verse 5 of 2 Timothy chapter 3, Hillary? Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. So where will it be found primarily? In the, in the church. church. Having a... Form a God. form of godliness. Now, praise God for Psalm. Go to Psalm 27. Hold your place in Matthew 10. If anyone goes through this in these last days, when parents, family members alienate you, kick you out of the home, sever all ties and connection because you are standing for God's commandments uh, and his love. Remember Psalm 27. When my father, do we know it, friends? Yes. Read verse 10, Hillary. When my when Psalm my father, 27 and verse number 10. Pause right there. Let me just set mm -hmm, this thing up. Mm -hmm. Verse number 7. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me. Answer me when thou, when thou saidst. Seek my face, Andrew. Seek my face, my people. My heart, our hearts, said unto thee, Thy face, O God, will we seek. Amen. Verse number 10 now, Hillary. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Amen. Do you say amen, my friends? Don't forget this song. Uh, it's a scripture song also. Mm -hmm. Don't forget this scripture song and these words. Go to Matthew 10 now. Where are we going to, my friends? Matthew 10. You know what? Let's roll past that. Matthew 10, verse 34 through verse 38. Christ says, think not I'm come to send. Peace. But what? A sword. All right. And we know it. Variance in the home. Mm -hmm. Look at this now. So we just covered the crises that will transpire in various homes because one stand for God and the majority stand for Satan. Make sense now? Right. Let's talk about the crisis that will come to the church now. What will happen in the church, Hillary? What will leaders, former brethren who profess present truth mm -hmm. do to those at that time who stand for God? What will happen in the church, Hillary? Well, they will be betrayers, as was Judas Iscariot, and they will become the most bitter enemies of their former brethren. GC 608, paragraph 2. As the storm approaches, a large class, Hillary, 
a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message, mm. but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth, abandon their position and join the ranks of the opposition. Yes, by read on. By uniting with the world and partaking of its spirit, mm. they have come to view matters in nearly the same light. And, and when the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy, popular side. Men of talent and pleasing address who once rejoiced in the truth, employ their powers to deceive and mislead souls. They become the water body. Talk to me. They become what? The most they become the most enemies. what, Hillary? Bitter enemies of their former brethren. When Sabbath keepers are brought before the courts to answer for their faith, these apostates are the most efficient agents of Satan to misrepresent and accuse them. And by false reports, Hillary, and, in this, and insinuations to stir up the rulers against them. So when it talks to these talks about these individuals in Babylon appealing mm -hmm. to the strong mm -hmm. arm of the government, we see here in this last section as well, this last sentence, that even former brethren, those who once rejoiced in the truth, will also do this. The stir truth, up the rulers. third angel's message. Right. Stir up the rulers against them. And we see this in the Bible because Judas Iscariot did not hang out with Caiaphas, the high priest. No. Judas did not hang out with Herod. No. No with the Sadducees. No. no. Who was he around for three and a half years approximately? Right. Christ and the other So disciples. did he profess present truth of that day? Yes. But who was he? The betrayer. And as it was then, so shall it? So shall it be. Judas loved money more than how he loved God. Judas was self-important, mm -hmm. self-centered, selfish, and proud, unconverted, my friends. All right. So now, is a storm about to break upon us, my oh, friends? Oh, yes. Is it coming? It's so now, what is one of the mediums, what is one of the tools that God is using even now in 2018 to cause statesmen not to enact and enforce the Sunday law prematurely upon God's people because God's people are not fully ready? Well, some of these government officials see the... Um, I hear it. Go ahead. I hear it. Oh. Go ahead, Hillary. I hear it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, they see the laws to restrict liberty of conscience, mm. and they, they are against it. They speak out against it, and that holds back for a time. It restrains uh, these laws from going forward. So, and, and that's why you must not take to heart and believe men who profess present truth who are saying all the men in leadership position are with the Illuminati or Freemason, or in some secret society. They're all Jesuits and Jesuit-leaning and Jesuit-trained. We are told there are men even in Congress, men in high places that God is now working through to hold back the winds of strife and persecution from enacting a Sunday law, and God's people are not ready. Let's read that. GC 610, black words, the enemy. Bolded. The enemy moves upon his servants to propose measures that would greatly impede the work of God. But who, Hillary? Statesmen who fear the Lord are influenced by holy angels to Ooh. oppose such propositions Amen. with unanswerable arguments. Read on. Thus, a few men will hold in check a powerful current of evil. I want to emphasize a few men. That's it. <laughs> The opposition of the enemies of truth will be restrained mm. that the third angel's message may do its work. Do we see that in scripture? I want to ask them. Who in the Bible was trying to hold back the Pharisees and the... May I finish my question? <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to hold back the Pharisees and Sadducees from killing Christ. Nicodemus, Amen. go to John 7. Wonderful. All right. Since you got that, let me ask you one more. All right, John 7, mark these verses. I won't read this. I won't spend time here. John 7, verse number, verse number 50 through verse 53. That's Nicodemus. Can you tell me now, someone after the day of Pentecost who said, I'm going to give them a hint, who said, if this work be of God, it shall prosper. Amen. If not, it will come to naught. Be careful lest you are fighting against God. Who was that? Who, who? Gamaliel. Go to Acts 5. So was God working through Nicodemus? 
even though Nicodemus was partly deceived. Mm -hmm. All right. Was, and fearful, right. or like Obadiah. Anyway, uh, was God working through Gamaliel? Acts chapter 5, my friends. Mark these verses, verse 33, and skip on down to verse number 39. Mm -hmm. There it is, my friends. Notice, notice. And it's interesting that um, God wanted to use Pilate as one of those to restrain mm. the evil, although prophecy had to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Pilate had so many opportunities not to be the one to crucify Christ. Amen. Let's, let's move on. So now, when we see that the storm is about to break upon us, what must give this third message? Earth final warning, power and force. What must cause us now not to wait, Hillary, not to wait until mm -hmm. the Sunday law is enforced, but to go forward now, start giving that message. Well, when we see the agitation of the Sunday question, we see it all over um, in current events. As we watch the signs of the times, we can really see that the Sunday law question is being widely agitated. Now, how many of you remember what happened on those airplanes as we were going to, to California? And even also in the, in the, uh, the, 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 the airport, passing out those books. And do you realize, some of you, do you realize how turbulent those flights were? Yeah. And if the devil was saying, let me just get this plane to crash and kill these people on board who are passing on the book, Great Controversy. Mm -hmm. Listen to what this says on page 612, Hillary, page 612. This is telling us that the canvassing work, the call pouring work, the literature distribution work is essential in these last days. Page 612 of Great Controversy, this is how the chapter ends. Earth's final warning. Paragraph 2, Hillary, what it says here, the message. The message will be carried not so much by argument as by the deep conviction of the Spirit of God. The arguments have been presented. Pause. One more time. The, the what? The arguments have been presented. Listen to the, listen, listen to the next two, two lines. The seed. The seed has been sown, mm -hmm. and now it will spring up and bear fruit. Watch carefully. Next words. The publications distributed by missionary workers have, have, have exerted their influence, yes. yet many whose minds were impressed have been prevented from fully comprehending the truth or from yielding obedience. Now the what, Hillary? Now the rays of light penetrate everywhere. The truth is seen in its clearness. And, and the honest children of God sever. sever the bands which have held them. So what we do now, we may never see the fruit. That's right. But when the rays of light, what is that now? Based on what we are studying tonight, what is that rays of light? The mighty angel, the loud cry. That's it, chapter 18, verse 1. Mm -hmm. He comes down with great power. And the earth is what? Lightened. So the books that we're now passing out, the books that we're now selling, great controversy, ministry of healing, the desire of it, patriarchs and prophets, etc. Will there be a time when souls will come in? Amen. Based on those books. Praise yes, God. my Amen. friends. Sister White says uh, in corporate ministry, page 151, soon more than a thousand mm. will be converted in one day. Wow. Many of whom who will trace their first conviction of truth by reading our publications. Corporate ministry, page 151, back to the screen. Great controversy, page 605. Hillary, what it says there, heretofore. Heretofore, those who presented the truths of the third angel's message mm. have often been regarded as mere alarmists. Yes. Their predictions that religious intolerance would gain control in the United States, that church and state would unite to persecute those who keep the commandments of God, have been pronounced groundless and absurd. Mm. It had been confidently declared that this land could never become other than what it has been, the defender of religious freedom. But as the question of enforcing Sunday observance is widely agitated, the event so long doubted and disbelieved is seen to be approaching. And the third message will produce an effect which it could not have had before. So what are the signs that tell us it's now that we must be giving the final warning? Well, one of them is the increase of immorality and violence 
and individuals calling for Sunday uh, to combat yes. the, the increase of violence and immorality. Write, write the statement down. In the book, Great Controversy, the same book, page 500 and 87, Sister White says, a Sunday law will be called for, will be enacted to combat immorality, crime, and violence. Talk to me now, my friends. Do we see an agitation going on in the world according for Sunday observance to be enacted by law? Yes. What's happening now in Poland? Poland limits Sunday shopping to benefit family life. This is not a Sunday law based on scripture, but it is a precursor for the national Sunday That's law. That's it, my friends. Even a universal mm -hmm. Sunday law. Let's move past this. Even in America, New Jersey, we have covered that before. North Dakota, we have covered that before. Even in Maryland, a call for the Sunday laws, which are on the books, the blue laws, to now be retained and be reinforced in society. Mm -hmm. Crimes, what happened in Florida? Just yesterday, my friends, what's a today? Mass 50, shooting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Headline, Hillary. 17 dead in mass Florida high school shooting. And I wonder what they're calling for. And watch carefully. And they went back in history. Mm -hmm. Headline, Hillary. Columbine, Sandy Hook, mm. and Virginia Tech. Major school shootings in the United States in the last 20 years. And they're saying, look at all these shooting, the crimes, the, 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 the violence, the immorality. And they're saying, something is wrong. We need to put God back into our schools. Now, if you put God back into your schools, public schools, who oversee, control, run public schools? The government. The federal government. So what would that be if you put God back into the schools? Putting God, quote unquote, back into the government. Church, Church and state, state, my friends. Look mm -hmm. at this. Look at this. CNNBC headline, Hillary. 18 school shootings in 45 days. Did you get that, friends? From January 1st to February 14th, 18 school shootings in 45 days. Wow. Read on, Hillary. Uh, Florida massacre is one of many tragedies in 2018. And now what are they calling for right here? Prayer. Mm -hmm. You see, each, each massacre, each crisis, a national day of prayer. We're heading there, my friends. We're heading there. Look at this. Mm -hmm. South Carolina. Legislators want to put what? Prayer. Hillary? Prayer back in public schools. Headline, dozens, dozens attend Put prayer back in schools. Look at this. An ex-NFL player on Florida shooting says what, Hillary? Get God back in our schools. February 15th, 2018, Fox News. Get God back into our... So what is cool. uniting? What groups are coming together? Talk to me, my friends. Church and state. And if you notice, in Great Controversy, page 589, page 587, page 590, that these incidents are to become more frequent and more disastrous. May I read you a statement now, my friends? Testimonies, volume 9, page 11. 9, 11. This, what we're seeing here, show us. The Spirit of God is being withdrawn from the earth. First paragraph, we are living in the time of the end. How do you know? The fast fulfilling signs of the times declare that the coming of Christ is near at hand. The days in which we live are solemn and important. The Spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the earth. The plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of the grace of God. The conditions of things in the world shows that troublous times are right upon us. The daily papers are full of indications of a terrible conflict in the near future. Border robberies are of frequent occurrence. Strikes are common. Thefts and murders. Thefts and what? Murders. Murders are committed on every hand. Men possessed of demons. Men how? Possessed of demons. Are taking the lives of men, women, 
and little children. Wow. When we see these things, the Spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the world. You know, when you think about that, just as certain as we are based on these things that God's Spirit is been, being withdrawn, yes. we're talking about Revelation 18. And so while it's being withdrawn from the inhabitants of the world, from the worldlings, it's being stored up, as it were, mm. to be poured out in full measure upon the people of God so Amen. that they could go forward with this loud cry message and lighten the earth. Amen. Look at this. Again, put God where? Back in Back our schools. Back in our schools. Because many are going to say we, and we outlawed God from our public schools in 1962. Since then, we are seeing tragedies. Um, crises, massacres. And massacres. It's now time to do what now? A uh, Sunday law is near, my friends. It's time for Earth's final warning. And what is this senator saying, Hillary? What must take place to bring back morality, to stop crime and violence? Because this was a context. Mm -hmm. How to stop crime and violence in America? And what did she say? Echoing the sentiment of other men and women in high offices. Well, she's proposing a law to make Sunday observance mandatory. Let's move Sunday on. Church. That's it. We are here, my friends. Look at what this says in Great Controversy, page 606. And while we see a Sunday law is near, probation's hour is fast closing. And Earth's final warning is due to mankind. What are the majority of the people in the world desiring? Even so, what are professed Christian, Christians desiring while probation's hour is fast closing? They desire smooth things to be preached unto them. Let's read that. Great Controversy, page 606. In every generation, God has sent his servants to rebuke sin, both in the world and in the church. But who, Hillary? But the people desire smooth things spoken to them. Mercy. And the pure, unvarnished truth is not acceptable. Now, I'm going to come back to that one sentence, but let's read on because many of us think all we need to do to bring revival and reformation among this denomination, among the world, just live the truth. And pray. And, and pray in your closet. Right. Don't worry about calling sin by its right name publicly. Just leave the truth. Don't call sin publicly by its right name. Listen to what this says. And remember now, this falls under this chapter, the final warning. Red words, many reformers. Hillary. Many reformers in entering upon their work determined to exercise great prudence in attacking the sins of the church and the nation. Mm. They hoped by the example of a pure Christian life to lead the people back to the doctrines of the Bible. But... But the Spirit of God came upon them mm. as it came upon Elijah, moving him to rebuke the sins of a wicked king mm. and an apostate people. They could not refrain from preaching the plain utterances of the Bible, doctrines which they had been reluctant to present. They were impelled to zealously declare the truth and the danger which threatened souls. The words which the Lord gave them, they uttered, Fearless of consequences, and the people were what, Hillary? Compelled to hear now, the Now, 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 don't take this and go to a far extreme now. That we become radical and we become fanatical. Remember, we still need to abide by the principles in volume 3, page 108. That duty, stern duty, has a twin sister, which is kindness. If duty and kindness were blended, a decided advantage would be gained. Amen. And when I think but we must call sin mm, by its right name. All right, my friend. Since we're in the world and in the, and in the church. Thank you. Go ahead, Hillary. And when you think about giving a warning, I mean, what is the motive behind it? Love, would that not be love, love because you want to save somebody? As many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. So it's because you want to save them from going down this path of perdition that will lead to the second death that you're warning. Yeah. All right, Hillary, back to the screen. But the people, blue words, but the people desire what? Smooth things. Is that in the Bible? Yes, Go it is. Go to 2 Timothy. What did Paul write to Timothy and then to the church, even to us? 2 Timothy chapter 4, 
Verse 1, preach the word. Verse 2, preach the word. Be what? Instant. No, But I want verse 1 because verse 1 gives context. Verse 1 says... It is in the last days. Verse 1, Hillary, what it says there. I, I charge, charge thee therefore yes. before God and the Lord Jesus who Christ. Who shall what? Who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. So because God people. will judge the quick and the dead, the living and the dead. We are entering the time when the verdict is about to be pronounced on the living. The judgment of the living and the dead. And the second coming. What's in verse 2 now, Hillary? Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering Why? and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they, don't, don't finish it. And they will what now? And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall and be turn turned unto fables. fables. Go to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah chapter 30. And that's why. The final warning is due both to the world and to this denomination, to the churches and other denominations. Isaiah chapter 30. Are we there, my friends? Again, back to the screen. Hillary, what are those blue words again? In every generation, let me set the foundation. God has sent his servants to rebuke sin, both in the world and in the church. But, Hillary... But the people desire smooth things spoken to them. And? And the pure, unvarnished truth is not acceptable. Notice now in Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse number... Notice what this says. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse number 8. Now go write it before them in a table and note it in the book that it may be for a time to come and for how long? Forever and ever. So when, it, when it's written on table, in stone, that means it is important, right? Amen. Verse 9, Hillary. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, mm. and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit. Pause right there. So who do they not want to hear? The seers. Friends, did you catch that? Verse 10, which say to whom? The seers. See not. See and not. to whom? The prophets. Prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us what? Smooth things. And what is in our GC 606 on the screen? But the people desire what? Smooth so things. So by them desiring smooth things, who do they not want to hear? The prophets. The prophets, the my seers. friend. Does it make sense to you now? You sure? And what did this denomination do and say and vote in 2005 regarding the writings of Ellen White? That her writings can enrich but not define the faith and practice of Seventh-day Adventists. Cannot define what two things? The faith and practice. It's right there on the screen, red words. Adventist. It was voted and carried by the word church. It can enrich. Sister White's writings can enrich but not define what? Our faith, faith and, and practice. practice. That means the church officially, officially on paper from 2005 is now saying what? Based on Isaiah 30, verse number, verse number 10. Seers see not, and to the prophets prophesy not unto us right things. Read verse 11. What are they also saying officially? Verse 11. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. All right. Is that going on right now? Look what this says, my friends. Watch carefully. This is what we are told that just before, again, they don't want to hear the words of the Spirit of Prophecy. They don't want to live by the principles in the writings of Ellen White about faith and practice. practice. And one specific practice is how she condemns entertainment. Friends, are you with me? She condemns entertainment, especially worldly entertainment, right? Amen. 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 And she says that when God brought Israel on the borders of Canaan, on the banks of Jordan, those sins that were brought into the camp 
by Balaam, who was looked upon as a prophet. prophet, a preacher, those same sins will be brought in the Seventh day Adventist church just before the second coming of Christ. And she mentions uh, drama, she mentions uh, theater going. Mm -hmm. What two things, my friends? Drama and theater going. Hillary, read that for us. This is from Patriarchs and Prophets. Page 457. Go ahead. As we approach the close of time, as the people of God stand upon the borders of the heavenly Canaan, Satan will, as of old, redouble his efforts to pre prevent them from entering the goodly land. He lays his snare for e snares for every soul. Many of the amusements popular in the world today, even with those who claim to be Christians, tend to the same end as did those of the heathen. There are indeed few among them that Satan does not turn to account in destroying souls. Through the drama he has worked for ages. Hold on. Reread that through what, Hillary? Through the drama he has worked for ages to excite passion and glorify vice. Read on. Again. Through the what, Hillary? Through the drama he has worked for ages to excite passion and glorify vice. And so we're seeing that drama is condemned, not only watching it, but even acting it out or seeing a, a play, because that has become popularized in our churches today, unfortunately, as well. But we see what his purpose is. It's to excite passion and glorify vice. And when you think of it, they're acting out sin. So what, what can we, um, how can that be edifying? How is that turning our mind to Christ when, um, Sin is being glorified. Vice is being uplifted. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4 verse 8 that we are to think upon those things that are true, that are honest, that are just, that are of good report. And these dramas do not portray these things. And even if they did profess to portray these things, it's not of God to be uh, viewing these things or participating in them in any way. And it's just a sad yes. thing when the church is, is doing it. And again, we have to, is my mic on? Amen. All right. We had to kind of switch mics here. But praise God. Just as we are entering the closing scenes of this earth's history, we are going to see the drama, the theater going in the church. But remember now, what says Isaiah 30? What would they be saying? Seers see not. Prophets prophesy not unto us right, right things. things. Speak unto us smooth things. Fables. Get you out of, out the, of the way. way. And look at what we're now seeing. This is Mount Rubido Seventh-day Adventist Church, February 6th, on their Facebook page, so the whole world can see. What are they saying here, Hillary? Uh, you asked for them, and we got them. Black Panther movie outing. Mm. Tickets are now available for purchase. We only have 70 seats left, and they will go quickly. Grab yours now using the link below. Now, what do you think here, friends? What are your thoughts here about this? It's heartbreaking. Hmm? It's sad. Tickets, tickets now available. And then, who is the pastor of Mount Rubido? Michael, Michael B. B. Kelly, Kelly II, right? And notice here. And then a follow-up post on Facebook. What was written there, Hillary? Well, now it's sold out. Before it said tickets were available, but... As you can see, One day after. as of February 7th, we are officially sold out of all Black Panther movie outing tickets. And notice, when is this going to be held? Uh, it's Saturday night. I'm sorry, Saturday night at 6 p.m. on the purple carpet. And notice, and when does Sabbath end? On the West Coast, around 5.30, 5. Just imagine the conversations that Sabbath. In the morning, are you going to see the movie later on? So just imagine the conversations on the Sabbath, looking forward to this movie going later on in the evening. Make sense? How can God be glorified by that? That's number one. And number two, that means they're not going to have an evening service because they want to make sure people get there on time. Sun sets at about 5.35 on the West Coast, right? 6 p.m. Be there on time. What is happening among us? But let us not approach this based on our estimation. Let's see what the seer says. What God's messenger says. Yes, I heard you. What now? Mm. 
Mm. So even if they had an evening service, a Bible, some may cut that Bible study or cut the service short on Sabbath to make sure they attend the theater, right? Right. All right. And just imagine, I mean, when you think about the banks of the Jordan, it's not just the theater and the drama, but it goes along with the music, the nakedness, the whole um, atmosphere is yes. just... It just um, feeds into the flesh. And so the very um, church that is promoting this movie outing is the same church that has this type of, you know, bedlam of noise worship style. So it's, this is no one isolated incident, Event, yes. but it's, it's the whole environment. Right, right. I mean, the dancing in the churches. Right. Praise, the worship. Drums. And they, the they, dress they, they, deform. The dress deform, the naked dressing. The Super Bowl. They had a Super Bowl um, get together, party on that Sunday. And again, and again, this is what, again, because some folks normally say, how did we know that? We're not looking at things being done in a closet. These are things that they portray publicly, right? right. Notice now, friends, it. notice, notice, notice. This is the actual write-up uh, summary of Black Panther. What is this all about, Hillary? Well, it's a superhero um, type of movie mm. and it's um based on the marvel comics right. and so forth which i don't know much about i had to research it myself but um anyway we'll read what this has to say follows uh takala who after the death of his father the king who of wakanda returns home to the isolated isolated, technologically advanced african nation to succeed to the throne and take his rightful place as king but when a powerful old enemy reappears, Takala's metal as king and Black Panther is tested when he is drawn into a formidable conflict that puts the fate of Wakanda and the entire world mm. at risk. Faced with treachery and danger, the young king must rally his allies mm. and release the full power of Black the Panther. The full what? Power. H hold on now. So you are... Okay, full... Let's finish up. The full power of Black Panther to defeat his foes, and to secure the safety of his people and their way of life. Do you see a juxtapose here? A Seventh-day Adventist pastor leading his flock, and bear in mind, the flock want to go also. The flock, church wants to so. go also, Preach right? They it. love it so, right? right? And they want to go and see the power of Black Panther. Do you see a juxtapose based on our topic? From chapter 18 of the Revelation and verse 1. And I saw another Angel. come down from heaven. Having great what? Power. So we must be focusing on the power of the latter rain. Amen. The power of the loud cry. But a juxtaposition, a contrast is here. These men and church people are focusing, watching, and even analyzing the power of darkness. Yes, of Black Panther, Black Power. So what power are we focusing on here? Do you see how God allows these incidents to happen just in the same time when we get to a chapter in great controversy? That's right. And it's interesting because um, in Revelation 18, we're told that Babylon has become the hold of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Well, in this video, of course, the power of Black Panther is this supernatural mm. um, spiritualistic power. So it's all spiritualism. Correct. You know, where he unleashes, exactly, unleashes this supernatural power. Things that we as Seventh-day Adventists know are the powers of darkness. And friends, don't expect us to go in depth on Black Panther. Because really, I knew nothing of, of what Black Panther was. The only panther I knew of was Pink Panther from back in the day. <laughs> now, don't laugh. Don't laugh. Black Panther, Pink Panther. Don't laugh. So don't expect us to get into Black I, I know nothing about Black Panther and the power of Black Panther. But I know about the power of the latter rain. Amen. The power of the loud cry. cry. Look at this right here. And then this came out. Hillary, you brought this to our attention. Adventist Today, under Christopher Thompson. What was he talking about here? Black Panther, Black History, Black Power. Well, he was just basically talking about that now is the time for the, such a movie to come out mm. because this is a time wherein, um, you know, black people need to have a presence. You know, we should, Black History Month. Right. Black History Month, as well as, you know, all the injustices that have been perpetrated against, you know, 
people of color. So he's saying now is the time that we finally can see a superhero, you know, that represents us kind of thing. So, you know, he's saying that it's very timely and so forth. As a Seventh-day Adventist. Right. It's sad. And, and again, this is not to condemn uh, Christopher Thompson nor Michael Kelly, but again, show respect to these men. But we have to call sin by its right name and tell them based on the Bible and the writings of Ellen White that they are in error, gross error, and leading God's people to damnation. And if they don't change, they will be lost. If the people do not repent, they will be lost. Amen. Look at what we are told now. This is why they made sure they voted. In 2005, the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists in a world session that Sister White's writings can enrich but not define our faith and practice. So when we ask the question, should we be going to the movies? They will say, don't go to Sister White's writings. Why? Her writings cannot define Faith and practice. Exactly. Our faith and practice. How many of you remember years ago, this was the same question being asked in AYS program. Yep. When the young folks came together, young people came together, what was one of those frequently asked questions? Well, should we go to the movies? Should we go to the movies? And when I read these statements, most of the justifications and excuses that those in Rubido SDA Church will use to justify going to watch Black Panther and others, Sister White dealt with those excuses. I, I'm like, wow, God is good. Look at this Amen. right here. Because many are going to say, well, it's for evangelism. Look when we read something here. Many are going to say, well, we, we secured the theater for ourselves. So there will be no outside influence. But what about the movie? There are worldlings on the, the movie. The movie itself is witchcraft. Exactly. Do you see it, my friends? So that means we are not only saying we should not be going to the theater, but don't rent the video, nor download the video, and watch it because Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 says what, my friends? Talk to me. Hillary, what this says. And please, friends, Get these references. Amen. And not just Black Panther, but any other movie. Amen. Another minister seeks to please his congregation and tells them that young people must have pleasure. It is no harm to go to the theater and attend parties of pleasure and to dance. For Jesus attended a wedding feast. Do you see it, my friends? <laughs> There's no comparison Sister Watt there. is saying ministers would say this. Do you see how Christopher Thompson and Michael B. Kelly and the others are fulfilling the very words that they say cannot define our faith and practice. Mm. And listen what Sister White says next. She says that there is a specific doctrine, or she calls a theory, that leads men to say it's okay to attend theaters, movie going. And she says, any church that teaches, we can never get victory over sin. That church will tell you it's okay to go to the movies. Mm. Hillary, reread that from top. Another minister seeks to please his congregation and tells them that young people must have pleasure. It is no harm to go to the theater and attend parties of pleasure and to dance, for Jesus attended a wedding feast. All this is in keeping with the theory that you are not saved by good works, but by Christ and Christ alone. The ministers tell the congregations they cannot keep the law. No man ever kept it or can ever, keep, or ever can keep it. What a theory. The wise and good God presents to his people a law that is to govern their actions, which, which? it is impossible for them to observe. What a character to give our mm. Heavenly Father, who so loved man that in order to save him, he did not withhold his only son, but gave him up for us all. Thank you, Hillary. And notice, that's why they teach. We, works, don't worry about works, right? Right. Don't worry, it's Christ and Christ alone. Because now, now the devil can inspire them to introduce practices that are abomination. Do you see it mm -hmm. now, my friends? Mm -hmm. Let's move on. 
And again, reread these statements. Hillary, from top, what it says, but dancing. But dancing, as practiced at the present day, is detrimental to the health of soul and body. So those that say, but David danced, okay, this for you. Theater going, dancing, card playing, gambling, inebriety <laughs> are all steps in the path of vice and dissipation. He who, having received the light of present truth, will yet persist in venturing into this path is unworthy of the name of Christian. What, listen what Sister White says now. What attractions can this who? Come Elder. On. Can this who, my friend? Elder. What attractions in the context of going to theater and also promoting dancing in the church, what attractions can this elder of the church find in the dance hall? Is he in this godless company fitting himself to exert a proper influence over who, Hillary? The flock of God. Hmm, let's move on. Hmm. Signs of the times, May 18th. 1882, many placed themselves on the enchanted ground by frequenting scenes of amusement where fallen spirits mm. congregate. Mm -hmm. When what, my friends? Fallen when spirits. When fallen spirits congregate. Professing Christian, and this is a theme that would run throughout these quotations. Professing Christian, when you resort, when you go to the theater, Remember that Satan is there conducting the play as the master actor. Hmm. Babylon is falling, is falling, and is become what? The, the habitation. habitation of devils. Back Amen. to the screen. It says, when you go get off enchanted ground, because in these amusements, fallen spirits congregate, professing Christians, when you resort to the theater, remember what? The Sabbath day to keep it holy. Hmm. Remember what, Hillary? That yeah. Satan is there conducting the what? The play as the master, master actor. actor. And, Don't forget that. And yes. not only that, I mean, you may think that you're just sitting there passively. And, and yes, you are, but... Things are being um, sown into your mind. Seeds are being sown into your mind. And a lot of individuals that have demonic attacks can trace them back to movies, cartoons, Video games. spiritualistic things that they're partaking in. They're yes. ingesting through their eyes, through yes. their senses. Yes. And so you're not just merely sitting mm -hmm. back watching something. You become a part of this. Amen. And you're affected by these demons. And friends, most of these quotations aren't just written in some manuscripts, in some book. No, these statements are also written in Adventist home. And even, may I say, even those uh, who are not believing in present truth within this denomination have professed to read, to have read Adventist home. What are the first three words right here? Page 515. The true Christian. The who, friends? The true Christian. The true Christian. That means those who go to these movies... They, they are not true Christians. The true Christian will not desire to enter any place of amusement or engage in any diversion upon which he cannot ask the blessing of God. Mm. He will not, he will not, the true Christian will not be found where? At the theater. So those people who are going to see Black Panther, they are not true Christians if they know this and go against it. That's but right. those who did not know, what does God do in his mercy and love? He winks. winks. At it. Mm -hmm. But the devil doesn't wink, my friends. No. There are still consequences. And it's interesting that it says they are not to inter engage in any yes, diversion, but we're told Christian. in volume nine that we're not to allow anything else to divert our mind or to absorb our attention, but the pro proclamation of the three angels. But they're trying to divert their mind. And just imagine, are they going to pray before they watch the video? She said, you cannot ask the blessing of God. So are you going to say, please bless this congregation as we watch Black Panther that has violence? I mean, don't watch the trailer, but... And fornication? There's, yes. Petting. Nakedness, lewdness. I mean, look at the pictures. It. Lord have mercy. I said, Lord, should I really put this picture on the screen? And by beholding, you become changed. 
And that's why most folks who attend these churches, they dress similarly. Sleeveless blouse, sleeveless shirts. Well, by Same uniting way. with the world and partaking of its spirit, they view matters in nearly Friends, the same light. hear me now. Aaron prayed before the, out, the, 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 the golden calf. Did he not pray before it? This is a feast to the, Lord. to the Lord in chapter 32 of Exodus. You can't pray for this. So if, if they say, well, it's for evangelism. Volume 5 tells us that God and Satan, page 98, that Christ and Satan never work in co-partnership. All right. Watch again. This is uh, Councils on Health, page 240. Hillary, as soon, as soon as these entertainments are introduced, the objections to theater going are removed from many minds. And the plea, the plea that moral and high-toned scenes are to be acted at the theater breaks down the last barrier. So what will many folks be saying, Hillary, to justify going to see Black Panther and other light movies? Well, it has a good moral. It, it brings out, you know, something positive. To There's every no cursing. excuse that they will try to use. Right. Sister White says it does not hold water. There's no justification no. for it. None whatsoever. Those who would permit this class of amusement at the sanitarium, at the church, would better be seeking wisdom from God to lead these poor Laodiceans, poor, hungry, thirsting souls to wear the fountain of joy and peace and happiness. One mm -hmm. more. Move on. This is uh, page 108 of, uh, what's this? Hillary, from top. There are amusements. This is Christian temperance and Bible hygiene. Page 108, Hillary. There are amusements such as card playing, dancing, theater going, etc., which we cannot approve. Why? Because heaven condemns them. Read on. They open the door to great evils. By their exciting tendency, they produce in some minds a passion for gambling and dissipation. All such amusements should be condemned by Christians, mm. and something perfectly harmless should be substituted in their place. All right, let's move on. One more. This is Adventist Home, page 516. I read this, weeping as I read. Watch carefully. To those who plead for these diversions, we answer, we cannot indulge in them in the name of who? Jesus of Nazareth. The blessing of God would not be invoked upon the hour spent at the theater or in the dance. Hillary, with tears in my eyes, no Christian, the same theme, no Christian would wish to meet death in such a place. Mm. No one would wish to be found in the theater when Christ shall come. Mm. Just imagine driving home and meeting an accident coming from that theater. Just imagine a hand Writing begins on writing that. on that screen as you're watching it. Mine, mine, tikel, you for sin, thou has been weighed in the balances. Or even a shooting. You know, there, there was a shooting a few months ago in, in a theater? movie theater. And we're going there to go watch demon sports and these men who are not being moved by the Spirit of God. So whose spirit will be there? Watch carefully. That this statement was written before Sister White died in 1915. The last two lines again. No Christian would wish to meet death in such a place. No Christian. No Christian. No one would wish to be found there when Christ shall come. All right. That was written before 1915. Listen what was written in our periodicals in the year 19. 46. The Australian record headline Church standards. standards. I have this in print Church Standards. Look at this. And then it lists many standards. Look at page two. The blue arrow. It says this Surely. This is the second, third line from top third line. Surely no one preparing for the coming of Jesus will be found at the theater. That's number one. The theater. No one 
preparing for the coming of Jesus will be found at the theater, the carnival, the movie house, the opera, the circus, the dance, the car table, or in attendance at commercialized sports, public recreation activities on, its, on a careful Christian supervision are frequently employed by Satan in destroying souls, my friends. It says we strongly urge separation from worldly associations at skating rinks, at public bathing beaches. Lord have mercy. Amen. Playing checkers, playing dominoes, and the list goes on. Look at this, my friends. This is reflecting Christ, page 247. Hillary, so hold on there. So before Sister White died, we read, no, no Christian would be found in the theater. No one would wish to die to meet death in a theater. No one would want to be found there when Christ comes. And in 1946, the same words were repeated. But now in 2018, have we seen our progress? But the progress is not upward towards Christ, but downward towards Satan. A downward march to perdition as a result of throwing out the testimony. That's it. Read on, Hillary. Page 247. You have no time to devote to the theater or the dance hall. You have no time to grumble. It is lost, lost. You have no time to play cards. You have no time to attend horse races. You have no time to attend shows. Mm. How is it with my soul? Have I a living connection with God? See, that, these two questions must fill our thoughts. With everything How you do. is it with my soul? Have I a living connection with God? If I have, what must I do? I must seek to win these souls that, that are, are attracted, attracted with these outward pleasures. And what are they? First sentence. First sentence. What are they? Theater. You have no hall. time, no time mm -hmm. to devote to the theater or the dance hall. Friends, question. You have people who don't realize probation's hour is fast closing, and yet instead of the pastors, professors, and chaplains inspiring persuading the people to read the books, the testimonies. They are promoting theater going. Wow. And they're giving a mixed signal. And it's just like in volume one on the Broadway, that yes. section where she talks yes. about many Seventh-day Adventists in the Broadway saying one thing with their mouth, but living another way. Yes. That I may know him. Page 311. The true, what, Hillary? Christian. Again, the same theme, a mini theme. The true Christian will not desire to enter any place of amusement or engage in any diversion upon which he cannot ask the blessing of God. He will not be found at the theater, the billiard hall, or the bowling saloon. He will not unite with the gay dancers or indulge in any other bewitching pleasure that will banish Christ from the mind. To those who plead for these diversions, to those who plead for these diversions, we answer, what's the answer? Hillary. We cannot indulge in them in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. So instead of watching uh, these movies and uh, Black Panther, who must we watch? Where must we watch him? Blue words. Go in imagination to Gethsemane. Mercy. Amen. It's done. That's it right there, my friends. Go to Gethsemane and watch Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And by beholding him, you become changed. Why? If you go to Gethsemane and watch Christ, who came afterwards? Judas Iscariot. Do you see it now? Yes. Church and state. Do you see it? And what was Christ's words to those 11 disciples? Watch and pray. Watch what? Black Panther? No. No. Come on, friends. Mm. Watch Christ in the most holy place of the heavenly center by faith. That's right. He's about to pronounce verdicts upon. Mm. How do you feel, my friends? Talk to me. How do you feel? How do you feel? Talk to me. I'm waiting. 
Go to first Corinthians chapter four. Talk to us. What are your thoughts about these things? Sad, right? Weeping and mourning. Yes. We're closing. It Yes. Amen. Just summarize her points. She said um, basically that in these movies is being portrayed a great controversy theme. You have the forces oh, of... But, but even, pardon me again, almost every picture, movie, um, skit has the same theme, good and bad. Mm -hmm. Even cartoons have good and bad. Mm -hmm. All right? So now... Hillary, finish up. Right. And, um, the great controversy theme, right? Correct. And yet, we won't promote the reading of the great controversy. That's what I'm saying. You want to go watch Black Panther to see the great controversy theme? Yet you took the book Great Controversy and gave us great hope? Does that make sense to you, my friends? No. It's, it's sad because this study about should we or should we not be going to movies and so on and so forth should be given to a babe in Christ, someone that is coming out of Babylon, someone that just now takes hold of this truth. But you're talking about Seventh-day Adventist pastors that are promoting this. And in 2018, the very remnant of time when we see all of these signs let's, fulfilling around us, there. we're still talking about should we or should we not be going to the movie theaters? We should be talking about how can we get this gospel gospel out. People are dying. People are perishing. Our co-workers that we see every day, our neighbors, people that we come in contact with have no idea of what is soon to break upon this world as an overwhelming surprise. And we're sitting back indulging in self, you know, allowing these worldlings to entertain us. And time we're and laughing. Money. Yes, our time and our money. We're laughing at this and we're getting inspired and saying yes. And even crying. <laughs> for things that aren't real, when eternal realities are happening all around us. It, it's sad, it's disappointing, it's, it's discouraging. Anything else? Go to 1 Corinthians, 1, chapter four, verse nine. The Corinthians, chapter four, verse nine. For I think that God hath set forth us, the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a what, my friends? A spectacle. A what? A, a spectacle. spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. Does anyone have a marginal reference? What does that word spectacle mean? Theater. Mm. Theater. Wow. It's in the margin, no? Theater. Look at the screen right here, my friends. Selected messages. Book three, page 392. Hillary from top. The what now? The so-called Christian world is to be the theater of great and decisive action. Why? Men in authority will enact laws controlling the conscience after the example of the papacy. Pause right there. Volume 8, page 27. On the screen, red words. This world is a theater. The actors, the inhabitants of the world are preparing to act their part in the... Last great drama. God is lost sight of a power from beneath. Wow. Black Panther. Mm -hmm. Black power. Power of darkness. A power from beneath is working to bring about the last great scenes in the drama. Satan coming as... Christ. And working with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in those who are binding themselves wow. together mm. in secret societies. I know now, my, I know right now, these Bible studies, these lessons, many people are going to persecute us for these things. How dare you preach against these things our leaders are doing in the church? And the very same thing as we close will happen to God's people. And when the persecution bursts upon God's people in the last days, it's going to be such a crisis that many of God's commandment-keeping people, men, women,
boys, girls are going to say, had we known, had we, foresaw, had we foreseen what was going to come upon us, the words to destroy our character, the persecution, we would have held our peace. Mm. Sister White says this, red words, yet when the storm of opposition and reproach burst upon them, some overwhelmed with consternation will be ready to exclaim. Exclaim what, my friends? Together? Blue words? Had, Had we, we foreseen, foreseen the, the consequences of our words, words we would have what? Held our peace. And that day is coming. And if we cannot now call sin by its right name, you will, you will not stand then. Red words. Then feeling the utter helplessness, they flee to the mighty one for strength. strength. Praise God. They remember that the words which they have spoken were not theirs. Praise God. But his who bade them give the warning. Hillary, last words are yours. God put the truth into their hearts and they could not forbear to proclaim it. Who comes to mind, who comes to mind in the Bible? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Amen. Put down Jeremiah 20 and verse 9. Your words are like what? Fire. Shut up in my bones. I tried to keep quiet, but I could not stay. The words of Jeremiah. Amen. And it's going to come upon all of us. And if we cannot stand now, we're not going to stand then. But where is a secret of power? Where must we flee? Red words, second sentence. Red words, then what now? Feeling their utter helplessness. They flee where? To the mighty angel, that mighty one for, for strength. strength. That's it, my friend. Amen. That's it. And where was Christ to receive that strength? In Gethsemane. Amen. Where must we be found? Gethsemane. And that is who we should be watching. What do you say, my friend? Amen. Behold, John says, behold the Lamb of God. Not panther, amen? Amen. But Lamb. Lamb! Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, not panther. Behold what? The Lamb, the Lamb of God. Amen. Which taketh away the sin of the world. Is, how, how is it with my soul? Have my sins been washed away? Hmm. How is it with my soul? How do you feel right now, my friends? We've got to pray Cry and pray for our church. As C.D. Brooks once said, I want my church back. I want God's church back before it's too late. Father in heaven, we thank you for these words this evening. We pray for these pastors, for their conversion. If they did not know these statements, that they may now become knowledgeable of these statements and prayerfully retract the investment they have made and to publicly apologize and by your grace and by your strength live for you and to lead your flock, the sheep, the lambs into present truth and preparation to give earth's final warning. Father, I pray that we will be fitted, that we will not just be found with theory of present truth, but a practical experience. Keep us, dear God, in Gethsemane. Keep us in Gethsemane, that we may receive strength, power, and life, that we may lighten this earth with your glory. Save us, we pray. We thank you for hearing us. We thank you for answering. Is our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. All right, friends, I want to thank you again for joining us for this chapter in Great Controversy, chapter 38. And by God's grace, we will resume on next Thursday for chapter number 39, the time of trouble. By God's grace, we will resume on this coming Sabbath at 1130 a.m. God bless until we meet again.